Hey guys, Dan here with Vittertech, and we just had the biggest Apple event we've had in a very long time. They called it Spring Loaded with emphasis on Loaded. We've got Apple Card Family where you're able to share your Apple Card with anyone in your family. Apple Podcast subscription, so now you can pay for exclusive content. They've introduced the new iPhone 12 in purple. We finally got our first real look at AirTags and they're pretty much exactly what was leaked, so no real surprises there. My favorite one is a brand new Apple TV with a redesigned Siri remote. We've also got a completely redesigned iMac that I didn't actually believe was going to be announced at this event, so really excited to see that. And with that iMac comes a brand new Magic Keyboard with three different options, one which just has buttons, one that has Touch ID, and then one that has the numeric keyboard. And that, along with the Magic Mouse, are going to be customized to the color of your iMac. Finally, we've got a brand new iPad Pro, which comes with an XDR display and has built-in M1 chip, which means huge things in terms of specs. It's gonna be on par with all of these brand new Macs that we've seen in the lineup in the last six months. So there's lots to get through in more detail, so let's get into it. All right, so first things first, we're talking about Apple Card family. Now, there haven't been any updates to the availability of Apple Card, so that means people like myself who are in Canada are not able to gain access. But anybody who already had access to Apple Card, you're gonna gain the new advantage of Apple Card family. So starting in May, families are going to be able to share co-ownership of Apple Card using Apple Card family, meaning they get one single bill, but they're able to increase both of their credit scores independently. And Apple released the following statement, which I'm gonna show on screen right now, and that is, Apple Card can be shared with any eligible customer who is 18 years or older as a co-owner, providing the opportunity for both to build credit history together, get the flexibility of a combined limit, provide transparency into each other's spending, share the responsibility of making payments, and deliver the convenience of a single monthly bill to pay. That new feature is coming in May, and we're assuming with probably the iOS 15 update. Next, Apple announced a new podcast subscription. We assume that something like this was coming because in the iOS 14.5 beta, it shows that they changed the button from subscribe to follow, assuming that they were reserving the word subscribe for podcasts that you were actually paying a subscription for. And that all turned out to be true with this Apple event. Apple said that users are gonna be able to enjoy premium subscriptions from a bunch of different media sources like NPR, Los Angeles Times, or Sony Entertainment. And that'll be available in over 170 countries beginning in May. Next up, we've got a brand new color coming to the iPhone 12 lineup, and surprisingly, this wasn't something that was previously leaked, so really interesting to see this one slip through the radar of a lot of different people. But the iPhone 12 is now coming in a purple color, not to the Pro lineup, only to the iPhone 12 lineup. It's gonna be the same cost as the rest of the lineup, available for pre-order this Friday for launch on April 30th. And next up, we've got AirTag. So we've been waiting for this one for such a long time. We've been hearing rumors about it since, I believe, last summer, and it's finally here. They've finally given us our first real look at AirTags. They work with the ultra wide band and they're able to pinpoint an exact precise location and it'll show you an arrow on screen where you can follow it to find that AirTag. AirTags are gonna be a super thin tracking device set to take on things like tile, and they are very, very small. At just 1.26 inches all the way around and weighing just 11 grams, they're really tiny, really lightweight. Now the specs are up to standard with what we would expect them to be, including water resistance with a rating up to IP67, and that means you get a maximum of one meter in depth of water up to 30 minutes. In terms of connectivity, we've got Bluetooth for finding things in proximity. It's also got the U1 chip, so you can expect very, very precise tracking. And it's also got an NFC tap for if you put it into lost mode. It's got a built-in speaker so that you're gonna be able to play a sound if you can't find it. They're quoting up to a full year of battery life. However, if it does run out of battery, you are able to replace it yourself using a standard CR2032 battery. We do have the ability to customize these through custom engraving. You can put an emoji, you can put initials, whatever you want, you can put them on the front of it. And they've also come out with some accessories which are gonna be available for the AirTag so that you can put them on a keychain because the one thing they're lacking is any sort of hole to attach a keychain natively. And of course, those accessories do not come in the box. So if you are looking to get something to attach your AirTags to your keychain, you'll have to pay more money to get those. So taking a look at AirTags, just using AR on my desk here, you can see it's very, very small. In fact, comparing it with my AirPods Pro case here, you can see the real size difference. Now, if I rotate it around here, 
you can see it's very, very small. There's no way to attach a keychain like I was saying. It's really just a rounded device. You can customize the front there and super, super thin. We've got the laser engraving that we're used to on the side there. And again, there's the size difference. They're very, very close in size. So AirTags are gonna be available for pre-order this Friday, April 23rd, and they're gonna start shipping on April 30th. So next we got a brand new Apple TV 4K. Visually, it's gonna look exactly the same, but we've got a bunch of spec updates, including the A12 Bionic chip, 4K HDR to the big screen, and most importantly, a brand new revised Siri remote. So the new Siri remote has a brand new navigation surface where you can tap the four directions to go up, down, left, and right. You're also able to swipe along it to use it as a trackpad. And they've got a brand new circular gesture which you can circle around that ring to fast forward or rewind, very reminiscent of the older iPods. And I think we're all gonna like that a lot. The Siri button has been moved to the right side of the remote. And aside from that, we've got all of our standard buttons like back, home, the volume rockers, play, pause, and mute. We've also got the option to color match, so you can actually use your iPhone camera to scan your TV, and it'll automatically calibrate your Apple TV's color to the perfect color to match your setting. So here we can see it, it looks exactly the same as it did before. Now on the Apple TV remote, this is where it all gets different. So you've got the lightning cable at the bottom, just like we did before, all of the standard buttons that we're used to, and then the top is that brand new navigation where you can swipe, or you can circle around the outer side, or you've got the directional buttons. Now, taking a look at the side, you can see the brand new Siri button conveniently located on the side there. And size-wise, it's about the same as the original Apple remote. So next up, we've got a brand new iMac, and this is one that I was hoping they would announce, didn't think they were going to, but pleasantly surprised to see that this is a brand new redesigned iMac. It's 24 inches and comes with a 4.5K Retina display there's no option yet for a larger display, but I'm assuming that that'll be coming later on this year, like in the fall. They've redesigned it to be ultra thin. They've redesigned the speakers and the mics to deliver a much more clear sound. And of course, it's supercharged by M1. The brand new iMac is gonna be coming in seven different colors, including blue, green, pink, silver, yellow, orange, and purple. And it's all backed by the M1 chip, so you know it's gonna be extremely fast just like the MacBook Pro and the Air that were released last year. So while this is a complete redesign, I can't help but think that they actually chose the wrong things to redesign. They've made it super thin, but did we ever really care about how thin the iMac was given that it's sitting on our desktop? The one thing that we were hoping to have improved was to get rid of the chin located at the bottom of the iMac, and instead they kept that, changed the color of it, but they also changed the color of the bezels around the screen. So rather than them being black and when you shut off your screen, it all blends into one, now you're gonna have a white bezel that just stands out no matter what. So I'm interested to see what everyone thinks about this. And if you have strong opinions toward the brand new iMac redesign, leave comments down below because I definitely wanna hear about those. There's no denying it looks good. The hinge mechanism looks much better than what we had before, but I think something closer to edge to edge bezels and the cutting out the chin to have a more minimal screen would have been the better way to go. And judging by all of the leaks that we were seeing, I think a lot of people expected to see something a lot closer to the XDR display versus the existing iMac display. They're also updating all of the Magic accessories with this new iMac lineup, including the Magic Keyboard, the Magic Trackpad, and the Magic Mouse, which are all gonna be color coordinated to the Mac lineup or whichever one that you choose. You also have the option of three different Apple Magic Keyboards. The first just having your standard function buttons and a lock button at the top right. The second being a more expensive Touch ID version, which embeds it directly into the keyboard. And the third being the numeric version, which extends it to have the number pad on the side. Now let's take a look at it in AR. So here we can see it in AR in comparison to my 27 inch iMac that's sitting right behind it. And then we've got all of our accessories here as well that are color coordinated to match. This one is the Touch ID version, so you can see that on the keyboard there. We've got all of our standard function keys here. And then making our way down, you get the emoji button. Then taking a look at the actual Mac itself, you can see what I mean by the white bezels. We've also got a brand new Face ID camera, which is gonna be 1080p versus the 720 that we've been used to. 
and on the bottom you have this chin which feels quite useless. Now taking a look at it rotated here, we can see on the side just how crazy thin that's actually going to be. And then you can see all of the new hinge design here with a magnetic power cable attached and the dock at the bottom. And then you get four Thunderbolt cables here. So you're not gonna get any other ports than that with the exception, if I can turn this around here, of the headphone jack on this side. And that's basically everything that comes on this. So if you were expecting more ports other than Thunderbolt, you're out of luck on this one. The redesigned M1 iMac is gonna be available for pre-order on April 30th, and that'll be available in the second half of May. Now, the last thing that was announced at the Apple event was a brand new iPad Pro. And this one isn't particularly exciting to me, just knowing that the older generation or the first generation of the iPad Pro had such good specs that we didn't really need an update for it. But that didn't stop them from doing so, and that all starts with it being powered by an M1 chip. So that means that it's gonna have all of the same specs as the entire Mac lineup, and that opens the doors to Mac-style applications put on an iPad. So I'm really excited to see what developers do with this. They're also bringing XDR display to an iPad, which is just insane technology to be able to take what they have currently on their most expensive monitor and translate that into a very small, portable, still light iPad. My mind can't really comprehend how that all works, but it does and I'm excited for it. They're gonna be bringing 5G to the iPad. And as well, one last feature that's really exciting about it all is a brand new ultra wide camera that I hope they implement on the rest of their Mac lineup later on this year. With 122 degree field, it's able to see a lot more on screen, but it also opens up what they're calling center stage. Center stage is able to track you within the frame. And as you move away from the iPad, it's gonna rotate the camera to keep more of you in view. If others join in with you, it's gonna be able to zoom in or zoom out to fit everybody in frame and then follow you as you move around the room. Aside from that, a really welcome change with the brand new iPad is the addition of Thunderbolt, meaning you're gonna get way faster speeds when you're transferring any amount of data to or from the iPad. So that's everything for the Apple event, but let me know down in the comments what you're most excited for. Was this event everything that you expected? Were they missing out on anything that you thought that they were gonna have? Leave all of that down below. While you're down there, remember to hit that like button because it tells YouTube the videos like this don't suck and hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.